on the first night of Ramadan, whether it was Saturday or Friday, Allahu Alam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tells you what happened. Ready? He says, إِذَا كَانَ أَوَّلُ لَيْلَةٍ مِنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ بسم الله صفدت الشياطين ومردت الجن Allah chains the devils and restrains the evil jinn Allahu Akbar وغلقت أبواب النار All the doors of hell will be locked Not one is open So you can't go to hell even if you try <laughs> Subhanallah that's how merciful that month is By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah's rahmah is placed And all the doors of Jannah are opened Not one is closed so you really have to work hard not to enter. Subhanallah. Then he said, وَيُنَادِ munad." A caller calls. You may not hear it, but you will what? Feel it. Someone will call. يَا بَاغِيَ الْخَيْرِ أَقْبِلْ On the first night, I want your heart to feel it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it, then it happens. The person will say, Oh you who wants to become a better person. Oh you who wants to start a new page. أَقْبِلْ This is the day. This is your time. This is Khadija's time. This is Ahmed's time, not Dame time. Right? This is the real deal. This is the time you're looking for to change this whole life of yours. Ya al khayri aqbil. But he makes another announcement. Who knows? There's another announcement. Wa ya al-sharri aqsir. And oh you who's messing up so bad, quit it. Stop. Stop doing the evil. Oh you who's doing all so much corruption. This is not the time. Make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the end of this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ كُلَّ لَيْلَةً What does that mean? Every night, Allah selects certain people that will never ever go to hell. That's it. Done. Non-negotiable. And this starts from the first night. And what does it mean when Allah unleashes? Because the hadith says, أَعْتَقْ Unleashes your neck from hellfire. What does that mean? Let me use some common terms. In Islamic, I don't know about how it goes really exactly here in, in this side of the world, but in Islamic times, all right, and there's Khilafah and so on, and there's like the slavery and so on, because now the terms can be very confusing. But generally, when there's a servant and the master tells the servant, A'tahtuqa, you're free, they can never take it back. And Islam pushed so much to free slaves, agreed? Very much. And Allah will do this to you, and Allah will grant you this free, free, free. So people were free right, left, and center. Why am I bringing this example? Because in Islam, if someone, a master says to a servant, you're free, they can never take it back. That person becomes a free person. And how is this related to the hadith? When Allah chooses you to be freed from hellfire, you will never go to hell, no matter what you do. What do you mean? Someone asked me after a session, that what if someone, Allah chose them to be freed from hellfire, but after that, they wish to deviate away. Stop salah. No, Allah will guide them in a way because of that night Allah chose them. Subhanallah. This is Allah's choosing. So may Allah free our necks from Jahannam. Ya Rabbil Alameen. So this happens on the first night. So maybe Friday night, it comes inshallah. First night. So you go to Allah excitement. You go to Allah with hope that Allah will forgive you. You go to Allah. Ya Allah, please choose me. Ya Allah, please choose me. May Allah choose all of us. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ramadan is special. Because a good deed in Ramadan is unlike any other month. Agreed? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Umratun fi Ramadan ta'adilu hajj. You performing Umrah in Ramadan is equivalent and reward to performing hajj. Can you imagine you get a reward for Umrah for less than a thousand dollars within two hours? I actually looked up a flight. I just went up before I did this session. I said, let me see how much a flight can cost. I'm طبعًا, choosing a very cheap season. So it was a $624 round trip to Jeddah. How cool is that? But from Chicago, so you guys have to drive. <laughs> All right, round trip, and the visa is very easy. You don't have to have a group. Just go there. Umrah is about two hours long. And you come back like a newborn baby, sinless. May Allah grant it to all of us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. But don't go ahead and book it now and then cause problems with your family. Well, the brother Magic said in his lecture, relax, be wise, right? Be wise. Okay. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to utilize the Ramadan so well. Anything about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to the most part, you had to go to another level in Ramadan. I'll be very frank with you, many times what people say, I don't see my schedule changing in Ramadan. You heard that before? Why? Because I already read Quran, I already pray, I actually already fast, you know, pretty much Mondays and Thursdays. So I don't see my schedule changing much. That's not a humble way of speaking. That's not, that's not how you talk. And that's not how you aim for your goals. 
Because even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in Ramadan, everything changed. His charity changed, yes or no? You have proof? You have proof? Ya Hassanti, Allah barik fiqh. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sahaba said, Kana ajudun nas. He was the most generous human being ever walked on earth. But his generosity would reach the peak in Ramadan. Allahu Akbar. It's like, I don't know how to explain it, subhanAllah. Sometimes, actually, you know what? Let me use LeBron James. That's okay? <laughs> I just thought about it right now. Okay? So what happened? Uh, there was a janazah on Sunday. Kevin loved janazah because he got dunked on. <laughs> okay, for those who didn't watch the game, alhamdulillah, Allah saved you. So LeBron James just came and he dunked on uh, Kevin Love. And if you actually see the dunk, his head will actually reach the rim. But part of that is there's a, the elevation because he used the Kevin Love's body in a way. So he can actually went really, really high. SubhanAllah. Uh, uh, so forgive me. I have to defend brother LeBron. May Allah guide him. So the point being here, and طبعًا, just an example to bring it closer. Sometimes you think you can jump high. صح? But during serious, serious, serious times, your actual jump can go higher. Your body, your heart just changes, subhanAllah, because the intensity of the moment. Rasulullah is the best of examples in this situation. Because of the intensity, the barakah, the rahmah in Ramadan, he used to do donate in a way that would, people get shocked. Like his donations are just, I'll give you an example. He had a goat in which Aisha radiallahu anha was passing away, passing, uh, passing along to other people. So he went to Aisha radiallahu anha. He said, Ya Aisha, what is left? from the goat. She said, ذهبت كلها, all of it is gone except the shoulder. You know what he said? All of it remained except the shoulder. This depth, this is depth. I didn't make a mistake. He said, all of it, whatever we gave is what remained. And whatever is still is here is what we really have to give away. SubhanAllah, that's, how, that's who he was. His house, Aisha radiallahu anha, a lady, she comes in, knocks on the door, she wants some food. Well, Aisha has, has what? One date, Tamra, one date. SubhanAllah, this is the house of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this mom had two uh, daughters or two kids. So she passed the date to her and she split the date to two, to her kids. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's house, couple months, couple months would pass by, no oven is turned on. No oven, not because of Allah, healthy food, there's, there's nothing to cook. Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Yes, there were days he didn't have money, but there were days he was a multimillionaire after Hunayn. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa one time, after the Battle of Hunayn, he had war games that would fill a valley. Two mountains, a whole valley is filled. So then a man came, one man came. He said, man, you're so rich, O oh Muhammad. After that battle, you're so well off, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he says, do you like it? He's like, yeah. He says, it's all yours. The whole thing. The whole entire thing. Imagine like I open up, for example, I'm sitting and Brother Ahmed stands and he sees me opening up my Bank of America account. And he's my checking number. I'm like, you like this number? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, what's your zell? What's your number? And I tell him everything. Unbelievable, alayhi salatu wasalam. But in Ramadan, all what I said, he goes to another level. So can he go another level? So when Ramadan comes, inshallah, and sadaqah kicks in, charity comes in, the number that you give has to make you uncomfortable. You always go and launch good, which have you always pick the hundred dollar option. Good matter, hundred, hundred. No, nah, Ramadan 175. <laughs> no, actually make it a thousand, make it 500. And the whole uncomfortableness comes from the ayah, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ Allah says you will not reach righteousness until you give from that which you love. And when you give that which you love, you're not that comfortable. You're right, you're like, you're like jihad. And that's what you have to go through in Ramadan. May Allah grant to you all success. And you know what's cool for you to hear this when there's a not fundraiser, right? So this is my first $10,000, inshallah. <laughs> right? So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ramadan. So why is it so special? الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ Quran, Because it was the month in which the Quran was revealed. The Quran, which is the speech of Allah. The Quran, which is collected in the book that you have at home in the Masajid, the Quran which is 114 chapters, the Qur'an, that starts from Fatiha, ends with An-Nas, the Qur'an, is that which will last the Yawmul Qiyamah, the Qur'an, which every letter that you read is 10 hasanat that Allah multiplies, the Qur'an, Hudan Lin-Nas, which guidance is in it. Hudan Lin-Nas, on how to treat your family in the Qur'an. The Qur'an guides you how to deal with stress, the Qur'an. The Qur'an guides you on how to deal with, how to have hope when you're almost hopeless, the Qur'an. The Qur'an helps you how to deal with buying and selling, the Qur'an, Hudan Lin-Nas. 
And don't say it's complicated because Allah said huda. Then he says And Allah says it's clear. It's not complicated. Quran is not complicated. No. But yeah, brother, but you know, it's actually, I'm really struggling. Okay. When you studied for your exam, what did you do? What do you mean? When you studied for your exam, did you go to a coffee shop? Well, yeah, one time. Did you go to a library? Yeah. Did you put, do not disturb? Sometimes. Did you tell your mom and dad, please don't call me unless it's an urgent matter? Yes. So you gave your biology exam so much focus? Yes. What did you get? An A? Great. Did you do that amount of effort towards the Quran? No. The Quran will give you what you give it. You give the Quran five minutes randomness while you're in the drive-thru of Dairy Queen? <laughs> Okay, it will not give you what you read in the reviews. <laughs> Quran changed my life. It, I, Allah, I was in Dairy Queen. I didn't change my life. Yeah, because you give it five minutes. You won't get an A plus in calculus when you give it five minutes. Agreed? You have to be very honest. Allah said, Wala qad Allah said, we made the Quran easy. Easy to memorize. Easy to understand and easy to apply. Yes, it's possible. It's not impossible. It's possible. Fahal min muddakir. Anybody wants to take this challenge? Anybody wants to live this verse? Anybody was going to put the effort? Anybody's going to do everything they can? So it's there. Allah says, min al-huda. Then Allah says, wal furqan. What's wal furqan? Who can help me out? What's wal furqan? Ali Sotak, raise your voice. Criteria, sah, to differentiate the truth from falsehood. That's the Quran. Quran will tell you what's extreme and what's not extreme. Not a TED talk. Not what? Not a TED talk. Not a guy that comes, and I'm not mentioning his name yet, but he comes and then he shows you two images. He shows on, the, on his right side, if I'm not mistaken, but I had to lower my gaze on the other image. So the first image, there was a sister wearing Islamic attire. Okay, she had niqab and everything. Then the next image, a woman wearing a bathing suit, like a two-piece, uh, even the mic, uh, <laughs> even the mic lowered their voice. <laughs> like, astaghfirullah. It says battery. Oh, nice. Jazakallah khair. What is it? Oh, what kind of sign is it? <laughs> like it's a sign. <laughs> Bad sign, good sign. Should I continue? Okay. So the other, what was the first image? Did you guys hear that? Okay, second image, astaghfirullah. <laughs> okay. I learned my lesson, it's a sign. So then this guy says, look at this extreme, completely covered head to toe. And look at this other extreme, not covered except kada. Okay, he's like, look at these two extremes. Can we not be somewhere in the middle? And people are like, Ish. and he chose his brain to be God. Did you see that? He chose what's middle. He chose, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا He said, no, I'll tell you what's the, uh, the, the, the middle, the, what's the best. لا, Allah will tell me what's extreme, what's not extreme. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will tell me whether the beer is an extremist thing to do or not. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will tell me if waking up for fajr is too much or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell me if fasting in Ramadan will kill me or not. Allah tell me what's right and what's wrong. Al-Furqan, Al-Quran. Because if there's no relationship with the Quran, then we're completely misguided. La, 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 sorry. If we don't connect the Quran, we're dead. Oof. I know I am around Cleveland Clinic, and I know there are physicians in the crowd, but there's no connection with the Quran, we're dead. And these are not my words. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ The example of the one who remembers Allah and the greatest of remembrance is the Quran. And the one who does not do dhikr kal hayy wal mayyit is like the one who's alive and the one who's dead. Yes, your heart beats. Yes, you're healthy. Yes, you're strong, but you're spiritually dead. So how to have that resurrection? Go back to the Quran. Shahru Ramadan al-ladhi unzila fi al-Quran. And ya Allah, what will happen to you and I when we connect to the Quran? What will happen to you and I when we live the Quran? Think of Ubayy ibn Ka'b. One time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and every time you hear that beautiful name, say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went to Ubay. He says, Ya Ubay, Allah told me to tell you. See that? Allah told me to tell you and read to you a surah from the Quran. So what is Ubay thinking 
Asamani Rabbi, Allah mentioned to you my name, like he told you, read to obey, not a brother. <laughs> he actually said my name. He said, Naam. And he started crying and crying and crying. Obey, brothers and sisters, was not known to narrate hadith like Abu Hurairah. Obey was not known to fight like Khalid. Obey was not known to donate like Uthman. Obey was not known to serve the Prophet like Anas. Ubay was known to be a man of Qur'an. A man of Qur'an makes Allah Jalla Jalal who mentions you by name. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has VIP people. Inna lillahi ahlina min nas VIP status. So the Sahaba said, and who are they, Ya Rasulullah? Who are they? Because we want to be part of this. How does it feel in dunya to have a VIP tag? How does it feel? Right? How does it feel to walk, oh, this is the speaker's lounge, like, ah, this is my tag. SubhanAllah, prestige in the dunya, simple matters. What about with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? VIP care by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He says, Ahlul Quran, Ahlullah wa khasatu. They are the people of the Quran. They take the Quran seriously. They work hard, they struggle, they struggle. There's a language barrier. They try to learn a few words. They try to, uh, you know, work hard on their language. Labas. They try to understand, open up the translation. They try and watch some, some videos. Allah loves these people. Not just that. There's a special reward for those who struggle. Yes or no? Special reward. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the one who reads the Quran very, very well, as Mufti Abdul Wahab mentioned, they are with the angels, very high end, elite. And the one who reads the Quran, wa yata ta that's how he said, yata ta ta. Like you stutter, you're struggling. Alham, and then, alhamdu, he's struggling. Falahu ajran, you get double the reward. Subhanallah, why? The reward of the struggle and the reward of the recitation. But you try, you show Allah that you try. And no one can say, I tried and it didn't work. Sorry, I'm asif. Can I say that? It's okay? A little bit too confident there? It's fine. You cannot say, I tried and it didn't work. Because there's two options. One option is haram. We don't believe in that. That Allah did not fulfill His promise. That Allah fulfills His promise. The other one, you might not be doing it right. Or you did not try enough. You see that? Why? Because Allah says, whoever walks to me, I walk back. La, that would be pretty awesome. La, it's more. If you walk to Allah, Allah says He will run to you. But you have to just walk. You have to open that book. Yes, it'll be a bit embarrassing. It's okay. It, but it's not really embarrassing. Try. Open that book. Make mistakes, no problem. May Allah make it easier for all of you. Say Ameen. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. Then Allah says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ So whoever witnesses the month of Ramadan, then be sure to fast. Make sure, this is an obligation now. Fasting the month of Ramadan is a wajib. It's a pillar of Islam. And if you fast, what happens? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانِ Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, out of Iman, out of Belief that it's a pillar of Islam. Out of Iman, that this is something I have to do. Out of Iman, that God doesn't need it, but I need God. Out of Iman, that's something as a Muslim I have to do. Wahtisaba and out of hope. Two conditions, out of faith and out of hope. Hope you look forward to the reward. You don't do it just because everybody's doing it. Wallah, if I eat something, I'll look stupid. La, that's not why you fast. Ihtisaban, you hope for Allah's reward, you're excited for it. If you do these two conditions while you fast, what happens? All of your previous sins are extinguished. All of your previous sins are erased. May Allah allow us to witness Ramadan. And may Allah make us fast at Iman and Wahtisaba, Ya Rabbil Alameen, out of faith and hope. Yalla, Bismillah. And this deen is a balanced deen. Agreed? So we speak about hope and we speak about fear. Allah says, Allah forgives the sins, accepts your return. Right after that, what does he say? Same verse. Shadid al aqab severe in punishment. Right? And doesn't, he never warns you except that he loves you. Remember that. He never warns you except that he loves you. It's like how many times you get warned? Hey, don't get close to the cars. Why? Why? Where's my freedom? It's freedom for what? <laughs> to get hit by a car? We don't, we don't, we don't complain about that, correct? Hey, watch out, the knife is very sharp. Leave me, leave me, leave me, I'm in America. You don't say stuff like that. But with Allah, we argue the why. Why, why do I have to get punished? Like, what did he get out of punishing me? Subhanallah. Allah doesn't need you, doesn't need me, doesn't need no one. All of our hearts were according to the most filthy heart on earth. We all had the heart of Pharaoh. 
Allah's net worth, Allah's value does not decrease. If all of our hearts were in accordance to the purest heart on earth, Allah's value does not increase. Allah began the Quran by praising his own self. He doesn't need you or me. He began, Alhamdulillah, he said it, not you or I. He is a samad you need me, and he, and he doesn't need any one of us. Allah Jalla Jalal, Allah samad So when he says these things to wake you up, never does he tell you to do something except that it's good for you. Never does he tell you stay away from something except that it's bad for you. You have to believe in that. So sometimes if what it takes is that I scare you, then so be it, agreed? So hey, drive properly, drive properly. Okay, drive properly. Oh, you know what, I'm gonna give you a ticket. Sah or la? So sometimes this is how people operate and that's how we all need, we need hope and fear. Someone is dying on their deathbed, give them more hope because they're about to return back to Allah. Young, healthy, strong, you know, chilling. Let me be a little bit more fear, depending, subjective, depending on the person. This whole introduction for a hadith, <laughs> because this is the times that we live in, it gets a little bit sensitive. Like one time I give a lecture, Allah's forgiving, Allah's merciful, like seven hadith, three ayat, a whole package, you know, buy one, get one, get everything. Then one hadith of fear, of fear. Oh, this hadith turned me off. I logged out of your session. Subhanallah. This is deen. This is deen. So we have to be balanced. There's hope and there is fear. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an authentic narration. He said that I had a dream and the dreams of prophets are, re are a form of revelation, meaning true. It's not like some uh, random dream that we have. So part of that dream, he says, ثُمَّ انْطُلِقَ بِي Then I was walking with a, a, an angel, Angel Jibreel alayhi salam, and I saw a group of people being hung, being hung, from the back of their feet. So they're pretty much upside down. Then he says, مُشَقَّقَةٌ أَشْدَاقُهُمْ Their lips were torn. Their cheeks were torn apart. تَسِيلُ أَشْدَاقُهُمْ دَمَا It was bleeding. Very scary scene. So Rasulullah said to Jibreel, مَنْ هَؤُلَاءَ Upside down. Lips and cheeks torn apart. Bleeding. Who are these people? الَّذِينَ يُفْطِرُونَ قَبْلَ تَحِلَّةَ صَوْمِهِمْ they're the ones who break the fast before the time. And by duhr, like whatever. Asr, drop it. May Allah protect us. If this was the punishment of the one who breaks it before Maghrib, what's the punishment of the one who doesn't even fast? May Allah protect us for no excuse. May Allah protect us and forgive us. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahim. Allah is Ar-Rahman. Right after this part that I mentioned to you about the ayah, Allah says, وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ But if you were genuinely sick or you were traveling, فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخْرَ Then break your fast and make up for it later. Allahu Akbar. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ Allah wants ease for you. وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْعُسْرِ Allah says, I don't want things to be difficult on you. Allahu Akbar. He's made the door open for us. If you're sick, okay, what determines sickness? Help me out. What is it? Okay, and how, how bad of a sickness can make you break your fast? Throwing up. Throwing up. Okay, okay, I see that. Zakallah khair. What else? A fever. What temperature? <laughs> oh my God, I'm 98.9. According to Google, I should be 98.7. Zah? Ahsant. Excellent. So he says if a doctor tells you, oh, in your situation, you have to have this medication at certain hours, which will uh, prohibit you or stop you from fasting. That's an example, Ahsant, right? Did you, do you notice something, subhanAllah? Sometimes, you know, especially with younger uh, kids, you know, like a middle schooler, they come at 7 a.m. on a Monday and they start telling their parents, oh, my throat hurts. <laughs> 7 a.m. every Monday, subhanAllah. I don't think I should be going to school today, right? I'm dehydrated, look at this. <laughs> SubhanAllah. So the sickness aspect to the most part is dhamiri. It's your self-consciousness. Yani, do you really think you cannot proceed in fasting? Is it really going to cause you harm? Are you really going to suffer? This is something between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us good self-consciousness, Ya Rabb. May Allah grant us a high level of taqwa and iman, Ya Rabb al -alamin. Then you have the topic of traveling. And also traveling can go into depth and sickness can go into, into a lot of depth. But طبعاً, this is not the time to go into a lot of depth. But just to share with you a couple of points to show you Allah's rahmah. When it comes to traveling, I'll share with you two opinions, ready? Or two cases. Ready, inshallah? The first case 
Is it fasting and not fasting while traveling are the same? Does it happen sometimes? It's just as easy or just as difficult? For example, uh, someone's traveling from Cleveland to uh, Dallas. Actually, let's say Cleveland to New York because of the time zone. Cleveland to New York. Maghrib is at 8 p.m. I know it's a little bit technical, but just give an example. Maghrib is at what time? 8. Your flight departs at 7, but dinner will not be served until 8, for example. Let's say first class, right? So you're going to wait till 8 to have dinner anyways in the flight. And Maghrib is anyways at 8 o'clock. If to you it's just as easy, then generally you're encouraged to continue fasting. Fair enough? But what if I want to break my fast? There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Fair enough? But I don't go, Wallah, I'm in Akron. I went to Cleveland, that's Safar. <laughs> that's traveling for me. Especially the Arab, forgive me. I'm in Cleveland Heights, what is it? whatever it's called. Right? I went to this place. It's a different zip code. La, that's not how it works. All right? May Allah protect us. So my point being here, this is an example of the Safar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Sahaba said, we used to travel with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَا يَعِيبُ الصَّائِمْ عَلَى الْمُفْتَرْ وَلَا الْمُفْتَرْ عَلَى الصَّائِمْ We used to travel and the one who chose to continue fasting never rebuked the one who broke their fast. Oh, you're a weak Muslim. No, we never say stuff like that. And the one who broke their fast do not rebuke the ones who kept fasting. Oh, you guys are extremists. You know what I mean? They respected both. The other and last scenario to share with you is when fasting while traveling is more difficult. Is more what? Difficult. Here, you might be encouraged to break your fast. And this is out of respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No scholar that I, I'm aware of, because I think almost like an ijma, if I'm not mistaken, majority of scholars at minimum, they agree that if you choose to fast while traveling, even if it's hard, your fasting counts. Your fasting counts. Don't say, oh, it doesn't count. But one time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was traveling with a sahaba. And then while they were traveling, some chose to continue fasting and others chose to break their fast. So far, so good. However, the hadith says, the, the sa'imun, those who were fasting, they were dehydrated, they were exhausted, they were knocked out. The ones who broke their fast were the ones that set up the tents, were the ones that filled the jugs with water, and the ones that fed the people. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ذَهَبَ الْمُفْطِرُونَ بِالْأَجْرِ كُلِّهِ The ones who broke their fast are the ones who got the, pretty much all the reward, right? Not, doesn't mean that the ones who did not break their fast they will not get the reward, but he strongly encouraged. He said, ذهب المفترون اليوم بالأجر. They're the ones who got the reward. Because this was the right thing for them to do. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So then we proceed with the ayah, and this is the last part. Allah says, وَلِتُكْمِنُ الْعِدَّةِ So finish the prescribed days of fasting. If you're traveling, if you're sick, break your fast. But make sure you make up for it. But when do I make up for it? There's a lot of detail to that, right? I'll share with you one thing. There's two questions. Do I make up for the days I missed right after? And if I do it right after, do they have to be one after the other? Any method? Example, you broke your uh, three days of fasting. When you make it up, do you have to do one, two, three back to back? And do you have to do it in Shawwal? Well, let's take Aisha radiallahu anha in Al Bukhari, an authentic narration. She says in authentic narration, the days of fasting that I had to break for personal reasons and so on. I would to make them up in Sha'ban. Now, the ones who don't know the calendar, like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right, I only know Ramadan, but. <laughs> and when I go to Hajj, I know the Hijjah. That's pretty much it. Once in a lifetime. Right, so the brother's going to help us out. Akhi, who, who told us that the months. Sha'ban is which number? Go ahead. You guys can, I'm with you. Go ahead. Shaban is eight. Ramadan is which month? Nine. So she waited 11 months to make it up. You see that? She used to wait 11 months to make it up. And one of the reasons she said, you know, I, wanna, I, I like to be, you know, in a good state for my husband, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And she put him in a priority when things became, you know, crunch times. Like, I got I to gotta make up the days. Alayha radiallahu anha. Ameen rabbil alameen. So this is something to appreciate. And you don't have to do it in consecutive order. And we respect difference of opinion that are valid. May Allah protect us. Last part, لِتُكْمِنُ الْعِدَّةِ وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ Now you're done. The last day of Ramadan, you know that feeling? Last day, Maghrib is like five minutes away, خلاص. The last iftar, the last date that you will have, a date as in food, okay? Inshallah, 
and everything khalas and then Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, the adhan goes off. Allah says, وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ Celebrate. How do you celebrate? Allahu Akbar. You know what happens when people read Quran very well and so on, what happens? Takbir. Takbir. Because it was so fascinating. So when you're done, you're fascinated. How did Allah help me? Fast 30 days, Allahu Akbar. That's how we celebrate. We relate success to Allah, not to us. Allahu Akbar. My friends thought I will faint by day two. Allahu Akbar. I did 30 days. Allahu Akbar. Walitukabbiru Allah ala ma hadakum. Allahu Akbar. He helped me witness another Ramadan. Allahu Akbar. You're excited and you keep saying Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Wallahin. Until Eid Salah. Takbir. Excited. That's your, you're certified. What do some people do? Forgive me for some examples of sports. People get so proud of themselves, right? Like one guy, he scores a goal and he does this to the people. What does he do? Uh, what does it mean? Like, you know, this is the guy who scores like Messi. Is that? He says, this is like, uh, this is me. As Muslims, we don't relate success to ourselves. If greatness happens, it's from Allah Jalla Jalalu. So we do like Habib. How about that? Takbir, right? Subhanallah, don't relate success to yourself. This conference goes well, it's before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it goes bad, it's because of you guys, okay? <laughs> All right, may Allah protect you. وَلَتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So perhaps you're grateful that Allah gave you another Ramadan to witness. You're so happy. Shukran ya Allah. Thank you, Allah. Your connection with the Quran has never been as strong. Shukran ya Allah. وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Thank you, Allah, that you made me a Muslim. Thank you, Allah, that you made me a Muslim. Wallah, if you were told that in a week, you will have a check of a million dollars or that you will have Ramadan. Now that you know a little bit about Ramadan, you say, I want Ramadan more than a million dollars. Because of the Rahmah, Khayrun Mimma Yajma'oon. Allah says the Rahmah of Allah, the mercy of God is more valuable than everything you will collect in your life. May Allah allow us to accept that and allow us to witness the month of Ramadan in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the verse 185 from Surah Al-Baqarah. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. May Allah allow us to witness the month of Ramadan. Thank you so much for your patience. Jazakumullahu khairan.